16 year old Bharat Subramaniam takes on Magnus Carlsen at the fifth round of the Qatar Masters Open 2023. Magnus has the white pieces in the previous round. Pranesh, the statemate of Bharat, held Magnus to a draw. Will Bharat also manage to do so? With the black pieces, things get considerably harder against the world number one. You can see him carefully adjusting his pieces. But Bharat is an amazing talent. He became a GM at the age of 14 and now at the tender age of 16. About to turn 17 soon, he is a phenomenal player. E4 played by Magnus and Bharat responds back with E5. This is going to be an interesting opening battle because Bharat does not like to play very conventional openings. He likes to keep it sharp. He likes to go for new ideas. So when he's played e4, e5, I don't think he'll play the main lines. Knight comes out to c6 and Magnus plays bishop c4. Now, Bharat generally does not go for bishop c5 lines here. He plays knight to f6. And Magnus now plays his pawn to d3. Will Bharat play bishop c5 and surprise Magnus this time? Not really. He goes h6. Now this move looks like sort of played against knight g5, like stopping that move, but not really. It's a very well established move now. And black often wants to go g5 in such lines. Bharat first plays the pawn up to d6. And now Magnus, I think the simple way for him to start playing is to play c3, b4 and so on. Well, he goes a4 first, gaining space on the queen side. Now, one thing to remember for white is not to make a move like h3. Like, for example, if you play a move like h3, then g5, g4 becomes very strong. By the way, g6 played by Bharat, he wants to play his bishop to g7 and castle. Magnus moves his pawn to c3. You can see how he's getting ready for the struggle. There can be a pawn push to d4. There can also be b4 pawn push. Bishop goes to g7. Now, if white wants to play d4, his pawn should be defended. So, knight d2 makes complete sense. And now, Bharat castles it out. So, we are... Seeing a very interesting battle brew up, b4 played by Magnus, he has 1 hour 20 minutes on the clock while Bharat still is at 1 hour 31 which means he is very well prepared. Now as Magnus gains space on the queen side, Bharat plays king at 7 and he's like I want to maybe go for the f5 break, that seems to be his idea. Rook e1, again nice centralizing move. Knight h5. Whoa, Bharat Subramaniam wants to go f5. Use the knight on f4. Open up the rook. The bishop moves in. But Magnus very quietly plays b5. Notice if you play knight e7, there's d4 and then there's no way to play f5 because white has really good play in the center. That's the reason why Bharat plays knight a5 and attacks the bishop. The bishop has to move back and that gives the move for Bharat to play f5. At least he's in time to get this move f5. However, what he's not in time for is what Magnus is going to do next. Notice very carefully how Magnus plays here. The way in which he sort of quenches Black's attacking prospects is just a joy to watch. Now, Bharat is down to 48 minutes on the clock. Magnus takes his time because it's a crucial decision. He takes the pawn. Now on f5, notice if you take e, g takes f5, that is knight takes pawn and the knight is hanging. Also, if you take with the rook, there is pawn up to g4, forking. So that's the reason why Bharat takes with the bishop. But now comes the powerful move d4. And black cannot take here. Up, cannot push the pawn if he takes there is knight takes d4 with an advantage because the bishop can drop back and so with the knight out on a5 black's position is getting very dangerous but Bharat says even without the knight I have enough pieces to launch an attack that's why he goes knight f4 
But now Magnus goes for this very nice move, knight e4. This is an excellent move. It opens up the bishop, also provokes d5, which would destabilize black center. And bg4 move meets knight g5, and you are going to lose the bishop. So Bharat plays d5. He plays it actively here, which is a good idea. But it actually fails because of certain tactics. Bishop f4, very good move. If you take back the bishop, I go knight c5, I attack here, but most importantly, I'm looking at the e6 square. So Bharat doesn't want that. He takes on e4. Notice if you take d, there's knight takes e5. So bishop takes, and now Magnus's bishop is attacked, but he can take the pawn. So he's now a pawn up, but Bharat's idea was this. He wanted to spoil Magnus's pawn structure and this is exactly the reason why he played this. But Magnus really does not care. He takes with the pawn. He says this is an extra pawn. You don't have pieces in the attack. My bishop is well placed and this should be good enough for me to actually win this game. Bharat plays his knight now to c4. That's a good decision because the knight was out of the game. For the missing pawn, he needs to show some compensation. And Magnus very quickly goes bishop g3. Magnus has 1 hour 5 minutes while Bharat is down to 20 minutes. Also, the time usage is a very good indicator of how confident Magnus is. Here, Magnus is fully confident in his abilities. h5 played. He wants to maybe hit the bishop with h4 and then could get the queen in. But Magnus stops it with h4. And if you play bishop f6 to hit the pawn, I'm going to take, take and put my rook here to defend. So a6 played here by Bharat trying to create play on the queen side. And let's see how Magnus converts this. There's a lot to learn from Magnus's conversion skills. He first takes the knight on c4. D takes c4. We are on move number 21 and Bharat just has 10 minutes left to make the remaining 19 moves. And notice this beautiful pawn structure which limits black's bishop. Queen comes out to e2 attacking the pawn on c4. How does white continue here? Well, black first takes on b5. Magnus takes back. So he's still attacking this pawn. But I think Bharat has a nice move here. And he thinks a bit. And yes, he finds queen d5. So with this move, he's looking at f3. He's looking at b5. These are very good squares to look at. But Magnus first plays his queen to e4. And he tells Bharat that look. If you take here, I'm just a pawn up and completely winning. So you can't. You will have to do something else here. And Bharat takes the pawn on b5. Well, it's a nice healthy pawn that he's captured. The material is equal. But of course, Magnus has seen it. How, that, how should he recover the pawn and not just recover, but activate his position even further. So for that, first, either you can go rook b1 which is a good move and win the pawn on b7 but you can also take take and now bring your rook to b1 attacking the b7 pawn you will see that with every trade white's advantage keeps growing because that's how magnus is placing his pieces rook b1 fantastic move now you want to win this pawn then the c7 pawn then you are closer to the blacking and notice the king is not very safe it's all lonely there while the white king does look exposed but has a lot of space here to move. Oh, queen a5 played. He's looking at the c3 pawn. So now things are getting sharp because Bharat says that if you take my pawn here, which Magnus does, I will take your pawn on c3. Bharat just has two minutes left on the clock right now. Magnus has 52 minutes. It's now turning into a... Fist fight, rook takes c7, Bharat goes in for a check. Is this going to be a massive attack here? Because if you, now, now he'll go king g2. And if you go queen c1, trying to threaten a mate, there is some trouble because of 
rook takes on g7 and i think magnus has figured it out that it's winning for him so that's the reason why after king g2 bharat has to work out because the threat is rook g7 king g7 queen check and it leads to a mate so he goes rook e1 taking away the eventual e7 square for the queen to check and still magnus is winning after take take bishop e5 although the calculation is not at all easy but magnus blunders here with queen d5 i wouldn't call this a blunder but a big mistake because now bharat can play queen d3 when magnus is forced to take here and this end game is not as easy to convert but bharat misses it he plays queen c1 he plays this and he's hoping for check check and trying to mate the white king but it will not work so easily because magnus has a very nice defensive move here he takes his time he has a lot of time he plays bishop h2 he stops rook g1 check and it is all over the position is now winning because there is no real way to launch the attack just like that magnus has managed to convert this well you may want to go rook h1 trying for queen f1 or something but already there is no real threat i can even go here you check i come up and there is no more checks left so that's how useful the bishop is on h2 bharat is now having very little time on the clock last 30 seconds left for him he needs to play his move and he goes rook e2 very tricky indeed because if you move your queen up trying to checkmate him bharat wants to take on f2 king f2 queen check and it's actually a perpetual look at this take take check and now if you go king g3 check king f4 is of course not a good idea because there is check and king e4 leads to queen d4 check and there is a perpetual here completely out of the blue but magnus still goes for it he goes queen f7 and what has he in mind actually bharat can take on f2 will the youngster do it that seems like a good move yes he takes on f2 but now magnus cannot take it if he takes it it's a draw the world number 1 oh he has this move king g3 prepared the king moves up and there are no more checks here wow that was very smart because now if rook takes f3 there is queen takes f3 and your rook up and bharat does not really have a move left for himself he is getting checkmated here and that is a big problem he has to figure out how to defend his bishop there are no more checks left in the position so he comes back queen h2 hoping that magnus gets tempted to take the rook when again queen d2 is a draw but of course magnus has no such intention he takes on g7 first and after queen takes g7 rook takes on g7 <coughs> he will be a piece up what a great great game by magnus carlsen actually apart from a couple of slips towards the end i think he played so well he understood the position so well bharat's king side attack was just very nicely diffused and now he has won the game with this he'll move on to 3 and 1/2 out of 5 bharat resigns and magnus has won let's hear what the analysis is all about Thank you. 